YouTubers, Charles Rowe here, uh, finally back to do another After Effects tutorial for you all. Today we're going to work on the apparition effect from Harry Potter. Now uh, I recently got asked uh, to do this by Avers Devil. He's a YouTube user. Um, you can find his link below. He wanted to know how I made the, um, the apparition effect. So basically this is a, um, it's a I would say this is more of an intermediate um, tutorial, but it's pretty simple to understand. I mean, if you grasp the concept of masking um, and the effects that I show you, then you can get this done no problem. So first things first, you're going to need to make sure you have your video files. Now, I recorded um, my video in two different video files. Uh, one is just the hallway. Um, it's just, you know, the hallway the whole time. And then the second video file is me in the hallway. And... Uh, as you can see, I'm just standing still. And so basically, in order to create this effect, uh, we use masking. And um, I use a, a few other simple effects just to make uh, myself actually drop in. So let's go and go into my canvas. Um, you want to drop both your files into your canvas. And you want to arrange your clips um, in a certain way um, to time it right. So what I did is I, I made my background layer. It's just, it's just about six seconds of the, the hallway space. And then I created another layer over top of it, which is going to be the layer with me. Um, and we'll go ahead and go right about right about here. Okay, so you see me kind of like uh, in layer. Basically what I did with, uh, or you see me in the composition. Basically what I did with this is I created a mask. Um, let me open up the mask just so you can kind of see what happened. Um, I created a mask just around my body so that I got rid of the rest of the hallway and kept the original hallway from the other video file because all I wanted to warp was just me and a little bit around me to make it seem like I'm warping time and warping space. Um, and in order to do that, I had to create A, a turbulent displace, and B, an opacity animation. Um, so we want to go to three frames. And uh, let me open up all my uh, effects that I have on here. Um, actually, you just select the layer and just press U and it will bring up all your keyframes. Uh, since I have the turbulent with displays keyframed and the opacity keyframed, um, that's not going to be, uh, that's, that's pretty much everything that's going to bring up. So right now I'm going to take my opacity and bring it back up to 100 because um, basically I put the opacity down to zero and then brought the opacity up um, 15 keyframes later to 100 just so it could look like I'm warping through space and whatnot. But I just want to show you the turbulent displays first. Uh, in order to do this, you click on your layer, you go to your effects presets and click on turbulent or type in turbulent displays. It should pop up under distort and you just want to click and drag that over top of your video file. Now, I already have it there so I'm going to select it. It's inside of my effects palette and basically what I did here was I just animated the amount of the turbulent displays. Um, I dropped the displacement down a twist and then just animated the amount. So basically this just determines, you know, how displaced my image is actually going to look. I left it up at uh, 300 and then um, 15 keyframes later I drop it down to zero. And it's going to create this sort of effect. You kind of see it. I'm warping back back to shape. Yeah, just like that. See? Pretty simple. I mean you can do all sorts of different warps with the turbulent displays. You can add another turbulent displays and warp it in different ways. Create like an orb warp. I mean, there's plenty of things you can do to make the effect sell. Um, but this is just pretty simple. Uh, just warped it with a twist. That's it. Now we'll go ahead and uh, put the opacity back down to zero. And then the second part is adding the smoke, uh, which is actually a video copilot preset. Now, this. The smoke effect um, comes out of uh, Video Copilot Action Essentials 2. Um, it's actually a lot longer than um, you know how many seconds you see here. It says here it's only about um, one second long. Um, basically, I just went in, right-clicked the layer, went to Time and Time Stretch, and I just dropped it down to about 7%, uh, percent, which make, basically means it moves a lot faster than the original file. The original file, the smoke, moved really, really slow. Um, and so I needed the smoke to move really fast, so I just made the, the, the video file actually move faster. And then I positioned that as soon as the smoke, as soon as the smoke um, drops down to the floor, um, as soon as the smoke drops down to the floor, I positioned it to have me 
actually fade from zero um, opacity all the way up to 100 opacity. And right around the middle of all of that, then you see the smoke start to clear away and I start to warp right in. So this is kind of like what the effects looks like. Let's see if we can play it in real time. Well, it's rendering, so it's kind of slow. But, okay. So let's go back and just kind of like play it again, just so you can kind of see. Boom, okay. Now I could probably make the smoke stay up there just a little longer. Um, it's really all about how you feel and what looks the best to you. Um, now again, I'm working with simple presets. I, I'm not doing any 3D compositing or anything. If you're a 3D compositor, you can make this effect look so much better with real smoke and real warping and all these other cool things. But, you know, hey, for the poor man, this is what you could do and it's really effective. It's simple and I mean, you get this done in literally like uh, a few minutes. Um, of course, I had to create a mask and just feather out the edge because if I didn't, then the, the smoke would have went all the way down to the bottom of the video file and it would have created a hard line and, you know, that's not going to look, you know, nice. It's going to look nasty. I also had to create um, a sort of a mask at the top of it so it would kind of create like a funneling effect to make it seem like it's funneling. Um, otherwise, it would just been, a, again, like another hard line smoke just appearing out of nowhere. It just would have looked nasty. It wouldn't look real. So I had to do that and... Uh, I mean, it turned out pretty nice. And so that's just, that's really the apparition effect. Um, the next step to the apparition effect is literally just um, color correcting. You know, making this part of the, the, the floor and the back of the wall a little blue, um, making the walls a really, really darker blue, um, burning the walls a little bit just so it can seem really dark and ominous, kind of like have the Harry Potter feel. Um, and then the, the, the final step is actually bringing it into a new comp. So what I did was I just selected all the comp, or um, actually I didn't have to select everything because everything was already in a, a composition. All I did was just create a new composition um, at a different uh, composition size. So the original composition, I'm just going to press Command K to look at the properties. It brings up, it's a 1920 by 1080 and that's what the original video um, file was uh, recorded in. Um, all I did was just open up the new composition, just title it final, um, press command K to see these uh, properties, uh, and I dropped it to 1280 by 550. And uh, this allowed me to create the cinematic look. Now, you can always leave it at regular, you know, 1920 by 1080 if you want, or you can drop it down to here. I don't know, for some reason, I just like it, you know, being down at, uh, at this, this, this crop size. Um, and so basically it just adds an extra uh, dimension to the film or to the, the, the clip or whatever you're working on. It just makes it look that much more important and prestigious. I'm sure you've seen it all over the place. Um, but we wanted to take those still shots and actually give them more of a handheld feel so that this will help take your effect to a whole new level, make it feel more real and raw. Uh, and all we did was just use the Wiggler tool. Um, and basically what the Wiggler tool is, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of, well, actually, let me just show you what it looks like first. In order to do that, all you do is, um, let's just get rid of all my keyframes. And you want to set two keyframes, wherever you want them. Set a keyframe here, and we'll set one right here. And then you set another one right there, like that. You select both keyframes. Um, boom, okay. You select both keyframes, and then you just go into your Wiggler tool, and you just animate... Um, the frequency basically says um, how many times the position is going to change per frame or per second. We want four frames per second or four keyframes per second, and we want the magnitude, which to pretty much means how violent it's going to move or shake. Uh, I just have it at three magnitude, um, nothing fancy. You just apply it, and then it creates this little uh, uh, keyframes uh, inside your video. And then basically, you just go back to the beginning and just let it play. And it just shakes your, uh, your video. That's it. I mean, it creates like a handheld feel. And then obviously, when the smoke comes in, you might want to make a more violent one. So we'll create a keyframe right here. Oh, man. Create a keyframe right here. We'll select those two keyframes. And we'll increase the magnitude up to maybe like 15 or, or so. And just apply that. And now, let's see what happens. See, you can already tell it's moving a lot more rough than before.
just by looking at the keyframes right inside the center. So let's play that from the beginning. You see it's moving a lot more now. I mean, that's basically how you can create the handheld feel and make it seem like the, the, the apparition effect is really making the camera shake because of the energy and, and whatnot. I mean, and that's basically it. I mean, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at charlesroad.com. Um, or you can go ahead and uh, just send me a message here. Anything that helps, you know, is, uh, uh, that's what I'm here for, you know. So uh, thank you for watching today's tutorial, and I hope you have a wonderful day.